Hi, I'm Martin Newmark with HouseKnowHow.com. I've been a home inspector for over 16 years and I was an insulation contractor for a few years too. So I've been in thousands of attics. What do I see in many of these attics? Walk paths. Walk paths through the insulation and areas where a lot of insulation is tamped down or shoveled to the side. Who steps on or walks through insulation, you might ask? Electricians, adding light fixtures, someone doing a fan installation or replacement, solar system installers, evaporative cooler installers, skylight installers, cable TV or dish installers, anyone that goes into your attic and moves around up there. Now, I hypothesize that if these people shoveled insulation to the side, it stands the best chance of being moved back to where it was and having a similar depth as it did before. Depth is important because that determines the total R value or insulating ability of the insulation. I further hypothesize that if insulation is tamped down by walking on it, blown cellulose is somewhat refluffable and that the newest kind of blown fiberglass is not refluffable at all. I don't like to trust hypotheses though. I prefer to test them. So let's do that. But first, why do people choose one type over the other? It's a good question. There are articles and videos that compare cellulose to fiberglass in different ways. Dusty versus minimal dust. Cellulose is very dusty during installation, but it doesn't affect the living space after installation. R value or insulating power of fiberglass I've read can deteriorate at lower temperatures. How a burning building holds up with fiberglass versus cellulose in it. The amount of energy used to produce each product. Cost to transport the insulation. Cellulose is heavier, but fiberglass often must be transported further distances because there's fewer manufacturing plants for it. And lastly, air sealing capability. Air can flow through fiberglass more easily than through cellulose. I'll let you study these differences elsewhere. But notice that none of these comparisons address maintainability. How do we maintain or repair insulation once it's been walked through, stepped on, or moved around? When insulation gets compressed, it loses much of its insulating power. So much so that XL Energy here in Colorado allows energy auditors to derate insulation values by half if there's a walk path through the insulation. What this tells me is that it's important to fix messed up insulation. The question then is, can that insulating power be recovered once it's been trampled on or moved aside? Let's do a couple experiments with bone cellulose and fiberglass and find out. I've got two five gallon buckets here, one filled with cellulose and the other blown fiberglass. To start with, I have 12 inches of cellulose and 12 inches of fiberglass. First, I'll move insulation back and forth between two bins a few times to see what happens. I'll do my best to simulate moving insulation around in an attic. Next, I'll pour the insulation into bins and step on it. Then we'll see how far I can fluff the insulation back up afterwards. If I can't refluff insulation, we need to add more insulation. This can be expensive because much of the cost of blowing insulation is the cost of driving a truck to your home, setting up all the equipment. The time to blow the insulation is minimal compared to these. And the cost of insulation for a smallest area is minimal too. But the cost of not fixing your insulation increases every month in terms of dollars spent on heating and cooling your home. This affects your bottom line month after month, year after year. Let's do these experiments. All right, I'm gonna set aside the cellulose and we're gonna work with the fiberglass first.
actually surprises me. We've pretty much got 12 inches of insulation left. So, theoretically, if workers go in an attic and move the insulation out of way and then move it back without tamping it down or um, compressing it too much, they can essentially retain the insulating value. Okay? All right, let's see what happens, and that's fiberglass. What about cellulose? you end up with 14 inches instead of 12. But that will settle down um, over time. Okay? Um, yeah, I'm actually quite surprised about uh, the fiberglass. Um, but uh, let's be a little more aggressive with how we move it um, uh, back and forth. So now you can see it's not totally level on top, uh, but you can see we've lost maybe an inch of loft. That seems pretty darn good to me, um, to only lose one inch, alright? And let's do, let's treat it the same, and we're going to use cellulose. We're still back to essentially 13, 14 inches of insulation. This thing is pretty full to the top. Now we're going to do the smash test. What happens when we walk on the insulation? So it smashed down pretty good. Uh, you watch me do it. Let me do a little, see if I can refluff it a little bit. Now I'm down to about uh, 10 inches. Okay, maybe closer to nine, because that's the 10 inch mark. I used red tape, but you can see the one zero and the nine inch mark is, is right there. So I'd say we're closer to nine inches than 10, okay? So there we've lost uh, three out of 12 inches, and so that's 25%, right? 
Okay. Alright, let's try cellular. See what happens. We're back at about 13 inches. Okay, so you can stomp on cellulose all you want and refluff it back up if you do a careful job. Okay, that's nice to see. Right. Now, this fiberglass at losing only 25%, I'm a little surprised um, that we didn't lose more. So in conclusion, uh, it, it appears that if either insulation is moved out of the way before people do work uh, in the area, the insulation can be moved back and restored to its original or near original condition. Whereas if it really gets trampled, which is what I often see, um, the cellulose fares well. It pretty much comes back to where it was fairly easily. You're gonna have to, in a large area, you're gonna have to work it, uh, work that insulation with your hands or shovels or rakes or something to get it back. Um, but you're not really going to get this fiberglass insulation back to its original loft. Hey, do you see that? The level of the fiberglass insulation is below 8 inches. Just a minute ago, it was about 9 inches. What happened is that I did a second round of stomping on the insulation even more than the first time. This second round compressed the fiberglass further, but not enough to add that footage to the length of the video. My conclusion remains the same. Please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I'm Martin Newmark with HouseKnowHow.com.